Back to college loans, student debt. Here's a tweet from a viewer who wants you to specifically answer the question, why not allow bankruptcy protection for students? Every other borrower has it. Well, I, I just disagree with that because people take on debt. They take on this, this they get these loans when they go to school. They often do not know what they're doing. I realize that they don't understand the implications. But if we did that, the American public would be responsible for that. And I'm just not willing to give that burden to hardworking taxpayers uh, who did not take that debt and should have known what they were doing. Diane is a parent DeSoto in DeSoto, Kansas. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I have two comments. The first one is real quick. I believe that middle school students, or at the very least uh, students starting high school, should have a class in how to study. I, I think that uh, kids are said, you know, taught, you know, go study for this test, but not, for example, how to study, how to use their time well, and how to use the resources they have. That's number one. Number two, with regard to elementary school, I've got a sister who's a teacher, and I know a lot of teachers. And when I talk, they continuously tell me about problems some of the students might be having outside of school. And it occurs to me that they're spending uh, more time as uh, social workers or guidance counselors than they are in teaching. They need more, in my opinion, social workers and guidance counselors in school to help uh, with troubled students, especially in the elementary grades, to take some of the burden of that off of the teachers. Thank you. Those are my comments. And I'd like uh, to hear your thoughts, please. Um, Diane, uh, deciding on the curriculum in your local schools is the responsibility of the school board in your, in your system. If, when we allow the federal government to dictate curriculum, we are going in the wrong direction. So I would encourage you to talk to your local school board, your local superintendent, and say to them what you've said here, that you think study skills should be taught as a course in the middle school. I agree with you that many students do not know how to study. On the issue of social workers, I think probably most schools have social workers now. Unfortunately, that is a dominant issue that's occurred. I know even in the schools in North Carolina uh, that I represent, most of them do have social workers. And that goes back to something we talked about early on. It, it should not be the role of the government to take care of the issues outside the schools. That should be something done by the parents and by other agencies. But unfortunately, the schools are being burdened with that. Uh, we have a lot of problems in our culture in general. We have many, many children being born out of wedlock. In fact, a, a majority of groups in our culture are being born out of wedlock. There's only one parent there. We all know how difficult it is to raise children with two parents, but with one, it gets particularly difficult. So we, we need to, to look at the values that our culture has in general and think about those and what impact they're having long term on our society. Congresswoman, what about high quality universal pre-K to reduce the achievement gap in this country? That is what the Center for American Progress liberal think tank here in Washington says should happen. They say this, that Compared to their white peers, African American and Hispanic children are anywhere from 9 to 10 months behind in math and 7 to 12 months behind in reading when they enter kindergarten. These achievement gaps are concerning. Math and reading abilities at kindergarten entry are powerful predictors of later school success, and children who enter kindergarten already behind are unlikely to catch up. Moreover, in the past 50 years, minimal progress has been made toward reducing these achievement gaps. Well, I, I would encourage you to quote some conservative think tank occasionally when you're quoting statistics like this. Those are broad general statements which are not held up by research. We've had Head Start programs, I think, since 1965, and the research clearly shows that 
the students are helped at the beginning of their career in education, maybe first or second grade, and then all of that benefit goes away. So universal uh, preschool care is very expensive, and we know that it has not worked. We've tried it and tried it. Let me tell you, we've spent over $3 trillion on Title I reading programs since 1965. The war on poverty began in 1965. We have not changed the achievement level in reading in this country one bit after the expenditure of over $3 trillion uh, in the last 60 years, or maybe even more. So it isn't money that will solve this problem, and it isn't more government programs that will solve this problem. It is the involvement of parents and parents and students themselves taking the responsibility for their educations. I grew up in an era when so many people were poor, there were no government programs, and yet we understood that to succeed in life, one needed to get a good education. And I grew up in a house with no electricity and no running water. You don't find people like that anymore in this culture. And uh, many of my co friends were like that. So again, it's a cultural issue that we're dealing with, not a monetary issue. All right, Congresswoman, thank you very much for this conversation this morning. We appreciate you talking to our viewers about these education issues. Thank you very much for inviting me. And bless everyone who called. It was a good representative um, segment. Thank you.